Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. Um, I wanted to just update you on a couple of things about uh, the prayer list. I've had some people asking about our friends, um, Shelly and Dan, uh, who were friends of Rick and I who had both been very critically ill with COVID. Um, our friend Shelly has made it home from rehab and is back with her family, so that is a great blessing. And she thanks everyone for their prayers. Our friend Dan is still at Madonna in rehab. He is um, walking a little, and his kidneys have regained their function, which is a huge and wonderful blessing. So he hopes to be uh, able to move in with his son and daughter-in-law by the end of this month. So those are both uh, very welcome, welcome uh, things to share with you, and I appreciate all your prayers. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of additions to the prayer list because these are people you don't probably know, but um, Shannon Hudson is the wife of the pastor at uh, Mariah Lutheran Church in Hershey. Um, he's a member of our pastors group that gets together monthly, um, LCMC pastors, and his wife in her 40s has just been diagnosed with a very aggressive breast cancer. So. That's Shannon, and then um, I'm also asking you to add our uh, Rick and I's very good friend for many, many years, uh, Deanna Darewich, who has just been also diagnosed with breast, breast cancer. So uh, those are prayer updates for you. I, I wanted to issue a huge thank you to everyone who helped with the church cleanup. Uh, you may have noticed how wonderful everything is looking. Um, the, the rock, how many tons of rock, Mike? Five and a half. Five and a half tons. Five and a half tons of landscape rock, and they're not done. There's gonna be a couple more tons coming yet. So um, seven guys put out all that rock yesterday. And also, I know the ladies were very busy. I've seen the sacristy, whoever cleaned that up. Oh my goodness, it looks wonderful. And they worked other places around. So a huge thank you to everyone who helped with all of that. Um, does anyone else have any other announcements? Yes. If anybody wants to take their Easter lilies home, please take them after church today. OK. So if you would like your Easter lily, um, there aren't names on individual there are, okay, so there's names on individual ones, so if you'd like to have your Easter lily, this would be the time to take it, okay? Anything else? Yes. Glenda Ruger has been on the prayer list, and we need to take her off. She had COVID for, she was in the hospital for like six weeks, oh. and she's still on oxygen, but she's doing better, so we can take her off. Okay, wonderful. And thank you for the prayer. Thank you. So more wonderful news. Uh, Glenda Reuter can come off the prayer list because she's recovering from her COVID, although still on oxygen. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, in many churches, um, it's traditional that the second Sunday of Easter is called Bright Sunday. Uh, you know, Lent is a time of solemnness and introspection, and it's also that time of the year when we're, we don't think we can't wait for winter to be over, but it's not over yet. Um, and then comes Easter, and everything is joyous and bright and new, and we celebrate that. Um, so Bright Sunday is actually a Sunday where some churches, like, do crazy stuff, like dress up in costumes even, um, Anyway, today we're not going to go that far, but I am going to make this, I hope, a little bit of a lighthearted service. I want everyone to just feel the joy of the resurrection today. And so on that note, I have some jokes. They're pretty bad. <laughs> but they're all Bible jokes, so I thought that we should try them. And if you have better jokes, be thinking of yours, because I'll give you a chance if you want to share your jokes. I'm sure they're better than mine, but here we go. Why couldn't Jonah trust the ocean? Because he knew there was something fishy about it. Okay. How does Moses make his coffee? He brews it. Very good. He brews it. Get it? Okay. 
You have to think about some of these, yeah. Okay, what excuse did Adam give to his children as to why they no longer got to live in the Garden of Eden? <laughs> That's close. Your mother ate us out of house and home. <laughs> How do we know Peter was a rich fisherman? Because of his net income. <laughs> okay, why didn't they play cards on the ark? Close, yeah, because Noah was standing on the deck. <laughs> Very good. What kind of animal couldn't Noah trust? <laughs> the snake is a good guess. The cheetah. Cheetah, yeah, okay. What kind, this one now, you have to know your Bible a little bit to get this one. What kind of man was Boaz before he married Ruth? He was ruthless. Okay. What kind of lights did Noah have on the ark? Floodlights. Yeah. Okay. This is my last one, then it's up to you guys. Who was the fastest runner? Adam, because he was first in the human race. Okay, all right. So if we do this again, hopefully I'll have a year to come up with better jokes. Anybody else have a joke? Lawrence, you've always got a joke. You have a joke? No, no. Nobody has a joke they want to tell in church. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay, for those of you listening at home, uh, Kay just told that they have a cartoon that shows Moses lugging the heavy stone Ten Commandments down the mountain, and he says, I can't wait for this to come out in paperback. So, okay. All right. Well, that takes bravery to tell jokes in church, so good job. All right. Anything else? Any bit? Last chance. Open mic. Okay. Our opening hymn is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 392 in the Red Hymnal.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who call on the strong name of the risen Lord. As we gather in the victorious name of Christ, let us open our hearts to him and confess the ways in which we have failed to follow his will and the ways in which we simply neglected our calling as his disciples. Lord of heaven and earth, of the living and of the dead, we come before you confessing our sins, asking for your gracious mercy. By our human nature, we are sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By your loving kindness, we implore you to grant us forgiveness and restore us to your salvation that we might live holy lives here and now and be with you in the final resurrection. Amen. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, God declares to all who believe and confess their sins that we are forgiven and restored to a right relationship through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed and renewed by Christ, our Passover Lamb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us walk in newness of life, following our Lord Jesus in holy obedience. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who went to the cross for our sake, the love of the Father who put an end to the power of death through the resurrection of Christ, and the promised Holy Spirit who gathers us together be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. He is Christ, the Lamb who
Let us pray. Immortal and everlasting God, through your power are the weak made strong and the ill made whole in body, mind, and spirit. Strengthen us through your Son's presence in word and sacrament, that we may be bearers of your grace to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson for today is from Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 148. Please read with me responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our second lesson is 1 John 1, 1 through 2, 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I wanted to just speak to you for a moment about um, Holy Week, that week just passed, starting on Palm Sunday and ending in Easter. And I want to just tell you about my Holy Week just a little because I want you to feel the gift that you have in the resurrection. So you know about our worship services. You were here for those. But the other things that were happening during Holy Week, um, on Palm Sunday after uh, I left worship, we drove to Hastings where I prayed and read scripture and uh, performed the commendation of the dying for a woman in her 90s who had been a lifelong faithful Christian, baptized when she was a baby, a tiny baby. Um, Holy Week happened. All those beautiful and meaningful services happened. On Saturday, Holy Saturday, I performed a funeral out at the cemetery, and I can't think of a more appropriate place to be on Holy Saturday than at a cemetery proclaiming the grace of the resurrection, proclaiming to the people who are mourning that their mourning is only temporary and that one day those graves are going to be opened and those loved ones are going to come forth, be called forth by God's word to a new and glorious resurrected life. And so my week began with commendation of the dying. My week ended with a funeral. And on Good Friday, I baptized another person. I baptized a person who was 99 years old and who had never gone to church and never, never been part of any of that. So I had both extremes. I had the person who had been a Christian her whole life and the person who had never been a Christian who was baptized at the age of 99. And I cannot tell you what it means to be able to offer the peace and the joy and the hope of the resurrection in those circumstances. 
And I just want you all, I'm not saying this because I want you to think that I did anything special because I didn't. It was God. It was the Holy Spirit doing these things. But the privilege, the privilege to be able to offer that to someone at those moments, I can't tell you what it means, and I want you never, ever to take it for granted. I want you always to remember it. And that is why I share that with you today. I have a hymn for us to sing that Carla knows about. I'm not surprising her, but um, it was not, didn't make it into the bulletin. I was on vacation this week, so uh, this hymn didn't make it into the bulletin. But if you will please sing number 612, which is Healer of Our Every Ill. 612 in the red hymnal. Shalom. In my language, that means peace. Peace be with you. I've come to talk to you today about that day, that day that changed my life, that changed everything. You don't know anything about me. You don't even know my name. But I'm sure you've heard of my son-in-law. Peter? Yes, you have? He became famous, didn't he? Who would have thought? Ah, that Peter. When my husband, God rest his soul, picked Peter to marry our daughter, I wasn't so sure. Yes, he had a successful fishing business, but he was such a, how do you say it, a hothead. He was so quick, quick to love, quick to hate, quick to make a decision. But it all worked out. 
He married my daughter and made her a good husband, gave us grandchildren. After my husband died, God rest his soul, Peter took me into his own house. There, near the synagogue in Capernaum. Peter's brother, Andrew, had a cooler head. They worked well together in their fishing business, hired some men, made a decent living fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Of course, the Romans had to interfere, like always. They figured out that there was good money in the fishing business, and they found a way to take the biggest share to make sure their tax men got their cut. They shipped the fish paste out to their faraway cities instead of leaving it with us to sell to our friends and neighbors as we'd always done. Oh, those Romans. But sorry, I didn't come here today to talk to you about the Romans. I didn't really even come to talk about Peter, my son-in-law, the crazy one, I came to talk about the Nazarene, the one who changed our lives forever. The Nazarene, Yeshua. I believe you would say it, Jesus. His name was nothing special, that's for sure. In our day, you couldn't throw a stone without hitting some boy named Jesus. It was a popular name because... We were waiting, and the name means he saves, to save, you know? So everybody wanted to name their little boy Jesus because we were waiting for the one who would save us. We were waiting and hoping and praying for the Messiah, for someone to come along to save us from the Romans and from all the rest of it, from hunger and poverty and fear and sickness. And you know... There was always someone coming along who wanted us to believe he was that savior. Some of them got men to follow them and took up the fight, but it never lasted. The Romans always got them in the end. They hung them up on crosses to make an example for the rest of us to see. And of course, there were plenty of rabbis too Teachers who interpreted the Torah for us and read in the prophecies trying to figure out when the Messiah would come. They told us how to live while we waited and gave us rules to follow. Many, many rules. We were always hearing about someone we knew who was following this rabbi or that rabbi around the countryside. But we didn't worry about it much. We had enough to do. We just kept working, kept on living, kept doing what we had to do while we waited and prayed and hoped. I can't remember when it was that Peter first came home full of stories about this man from Nazareth. Yeshua, he was called. Peter was so excited, so full of talk about Jesus and his cousin, John the baptizer. But I wasn't excited. How could I be? This man was just a carpenter's son from Nazareth of all the backwater little towns. I had no time or inclination for listening to some rabbi with more of rules and instructions and empty promises. And besides, Peter was always getting worked up about something. But then I spoke to Andrew, the cooler-headed one. He seemed convinced that this Jesus was something new, something different. And those loud, arrogant sons of Zebedee, James and John, they were following this Jesus too. I wished I was a man so that I could speak to Zebedee about it. What did he think of such foolishness? The four of them, leaving their boats and their workers, not mending the nets for the next night's catch, just following this man because he asked them to. I will admit, I was more than worried. 
I was angry. My life, poof, what of that? I was old and my husband was dead. I didn't care so much for me, but what about my daughter? What about my grandchildren? How would they live if their father was off wandering around the countryside, listening to some crackpot rabbi who thought he was special? I seethed and worried and fretted. And then I got sick. Have you ever had a fever? Not just a little fever, but a high, burning fever. That's what I came down with. Everything hurt. It was like a fire in my bones. First burning hot, then icy cold. I tossed and turned on my pallet. My daughter tried to care for me, but there was nothing she could really do. There never is with a fever like that. She stroked my hair and wiped my forehead. The children peeked at me with wide eyes. But after a while, I didn't see them anymore. I got worse and worse. I knew I was going to die. I didn't know where I was. I started to have strange dreams. I heard voices, but they sounded far, far away. Sometimes I was a child again, running through the hills. Sometimes a young bride, pounding the bread dough in the bowl. I don't know how long this went on. Time no longer passed for me. I was falling and falling into a pit of darkness, and that is all I knew. And then, as I fell, I felt a hand grasping mine. Cool and strong and yet gentle. The hand reached down into the pit and held me and didn't let me go. I was raised up and all at once, just like that, I was healed. The fever left me, left me completely. I was standing up. And I wasn't weak. I wasn't hurting. I was strong, stronger than I had been for years. I felt like a young woman again. I wanted to jump up and down and shout and sing and laugh. But I didn't do any of those things. I looked into the face of the one who had reached down to pull me up, the one who had saved me, and I knew. I knew it was Jesus, and I knew that he wasn't just some wandering rabbi, some crazy revolutionary. I knew that he was the one, the one we had been waiting and hoping and praying for, the Savior who had come to rescue me, not just from my sickness, but from everything, from my anger and my sin and my worry and my pain. I knew that he was there for me. And I want to tell you that he's there for you, too. His love, his great and never-failing love are for each and every one of you. He wants nothing more than to find the lost, to heal the hurting, to love the unlovable. And that is what he does. He reaches out and finds you wherever you are, whatever you've done, and rescues you and changes everything. Well, since Peter and the others became famous, and since John, that John, wrote everything down that happened in a book, you already know what came next. Not just that I was healed and was able to get up and serve Jesus and Peter and Andrew and James and John and the others 
to offer the best I had to give to feed and care for the one who had cared for me. But you also know that Jesus went on to change the whole world forever. He healed, yes, and he taught, yes, but most of all, he forgave. He forgave the sins of his hurting children. And the Pharisees and the Romans nailed him to a cross for it. But that was all part of God's plan. Peter was there when it happened. The tomb was empty. Jesus rose up out of the grave to end the power of death for all time, for me and for you. And that changes everything. Amen.
I invite you to stand and join me in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we give our offerings to the work of the Lord. Generous God, you have given us treasures too numerable to count. Grant us faith to be generous with all that you have first given us, our time, our resources, and our possessions. May we boldly trust that your providence, presence, and care are a never-ending reality in our lives. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of joy, for the gift of laughter and fun and fellowship. We thank you that all good gifts are blessings that come only from you. Lord, in your mercy. 
Father, we thank you for the promise of the resurrection hope that comes through you. We thank you that we are able to comfort those who are grieving or suffering, to give them your promise that this life is not all there is, that there is so much more to come, and that through trust in you, we will one day be with you forever in joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray in thanksgiving for those who have come to trust in you, to have saving faith in you. We thank you for those parents who bring their children to the font when they are tiny babies. And we thank you for the working of your spirit in the hearts and lives of those who come to know you when they're older. We pray for all the newly baptized that they would be strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the gift of sunshine and for the renewal and promise of spring. We thank you for green grass, blooming flowers, new, newly born animals, and all the joys this time brings. We pray for those who are farmers and livestock producers as they begin this busy time of year. We pray that you would keep them in safety and that you would bless us with an abundant harvest so that we might share that blessing with those who are less fortunate. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you that the COVID pandemic is on the decline. We thank you for those researchers and scientists and others, medical people who have worked so diligently to care for the ill and to find treatments and vaccines. We also remember the poor in many countries throughout the world who do not have the luxury of good medical care or vaccinations yet so that the virus is still rampaging there. We pray that you would protect and keep your beloved people and that you would make us aware of their plight and, and ready to help. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the whole Christian church on earth. We pray that it would be strengthened and uplifted and encouraged, that your word would be preached rightly, that you would raise up leaders and pastors and missionaries to proclaim your good news in every corner of the world. Lord, in your mercy. We remember those who have lost loved ones, those who are grieving, we pray that they would be surrounded with your loving comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we lift up those who are ill or homebound or recovering from surgery or suffering in any way. We pray in thanksgiving for the recovery of those we love who are doing better. And we pray your continued blessing and healing on Amy Sue, Mike, Scott, Artis, Dora, Deanna, Darlene, David, Tana, Chuck, Tim, Shannon, Dan, Roland, Glenda, Kyson, and all others whom we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your great and abundant mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Go with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please be seated for our closing hymn, Hallelujah, Jesus Lives. Go in peace, Christ is risen.